Travel Support Thursday, back again. Hey! That's right. Travel Thursday, Travel <laughs> Thursday, we're back. <laughs> uh, that song, I just, it's... Why uh, do you fight it? Just, just let it be. So anyway, today we are talking about <laughs> our new Disney video and all the behind the scenes stuff that it took to make this video. And this was so much fun to make for us. Yeah. Like such a fun, like creative... Thing for us to do the video didn't do all that well it, it didn't do all that good That's but, okay but I don't, I don't care i'm we still proud don't of it care, actually. <laughs> i'm still proud of it and and i think it's uh yeah i think it's important to talk about like this was a very different video for us to make uh made in basically an entirely different way so where should we start should we start with the idea well, or i the would concept, i would just like or? to preface if you haven't seen this video yet this is our four days in disney world on a technically zero dollar budget mm -hmm. and the concept is it's a heist film with a nostalgic heart about two big adults just trying to get to disney world on a zero dollar budget trying to do disney world for this free. is all season long i've been calling this one the weird one because mm -hmm. you know in every tv show you know friends ted lasso a ton of them there's always one season one episode of the season that's just a little different right a black and white episode an episode that's a musical. Not everyone likes those episodes, mm -hmm. but we had to do it for just for fun's sake and just for creative sake. So that's, if you haven't seen it yet, it's on our main channel, Four Days in Disney World. Let's get to it. Behind the scenes. So why what? did we do it? Okay, so the initial... Tell us the like, yeah. the spark of creativity that came to life. <laughs> I don't know. So the initial idea for this video was uh, trying to answer the question of how could we show this whole credit card churning lifestyle that we're so deep into and has saved us so much money and allowed us to travel to so many cool places. How can we show this in a really fun way by trying to complete some totally ludicrous but uh, possibly really fun quest? And, and not a way that's like us sitting at a laptop with spreadsheets and explaining yeah, things. Not that we've it. ever done that before. Yes, to show the thing from start to finish. So I was watching the movie Ocean's Eleven mm -hmm. and I was just like, this is the perfect tone for this movie because we're trying to like steal these points away and get this really expensive experience for totally free. And that's like a very like heist film sort of thing. So I was like, yes, that's exactly like how this movie should feel. And then I realized to do this, we're probably going to have to like script something yeah. for the first time since we've ever made movies. So um, the idea was like act one of this film is going to be uh like getting all these points together figuring out this disney world system and kind of like unlocking the disney experience on a zero dollar budget so i think so i think in that vein i think we have to say that it is true that this video probably is not for everyone because yeah. this isn't even like what we were necessarily interested in be to begin with like we've never really been the kind of people that like let's go to disneyland or disney world we oh. know that it's expensive we know that it's you know not necessarily our interest when we're thinking about travel we've always been the kind of travelers that enjoy budget travel travel to vietnam philippines somewhere different than the world that we come from mm -hmm. that being said i feel like the challenge of this was really what what made it interesting to us and the truth is we had a lot of friends who were interested in taking their kids to disney world or disneyland and they were talking about how expensive it had become so crazy and we wanted to do this experience truth we were, we were both a little hesitant about like whether or not disney world would be fun for yes us uh personally yeah so we were both a little bit i don't know hesitant about doing disney world which just Maybe we're too old for it. Maybe it wasn't going to be all that much fun. Maybe it's just, I don't, I don't know. It definitely seemed like not a budget experience yeah. by any means. Not an international travel experience. There were a lot of things that were like outside of the normal stuff that we love. Yeah. Um, but the idea of being able to show how to do all of this for totally free using all these credit card points and miles in like a sort of heist film format, that really interested me. Yeah. That really made me feel like, oh, yeah, this is oh, this yeah. is the right thing to make. Oh, shoot, oh, yeah. Shoot. A little bit of Wisconsin oh, came out there. yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, I think this video ended up being the most fun that we've had making a totally. video in a really long time. It's one of those, like, it's one of those things that, like, I kept couching it to, like, 
you know, I think we've been doing these videos, these travel videos and these YouTube travel videos for so long now. There's this feeling that we're like, we're in a good rhythm. We've got a format down. We really enjoy this format. People are resonating with it. You don't want to mess with that. Yeah. And, but it feels like you're one. Of, it feels like you're a little afraid to experiment. Yes. Whenever you find even the tiniest bit of success on YouTube, you're like, oh, "Don't touch it," because everything feels so fragile all the time. You feel like if you do any little move in the wrong direction, the whole internet's gonna erupt and be like, "No, screw that! Get yeah. out of here!" But we kind of like came to a point where we're like, you know, there was this. Josh had this idea. He really wanted to try making a fun, fun movie. In this like similar-ish format, but in a way that teaches people how we use points and credit card miles. Um, and and in the past, we hadn't really figured that out or figured out a way to do it in a way that like was fun and lighthearted. Yeah, without being too like uh, not PBS. Teachy. Yeah, too teachy. Too like welcome to my course. And we have a course <laughs> about the, exactly yeah, this, but we didn't. We wanted this to feel fun. You yeah, know, this to feel like you're uncovering a mystery. And I think. I think it came to a point where we were like, like we've always been the kind of people that we've always been the kind of people that I would say when we had an idea, we were open to each other's ideas and we would never shut them down just for the sake of like, it's almost like we have to pitch to each other yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And I remember when you were pitching this idea to me, all these concerns that we both just listed, you know, it not being our usual three days in it not being applicable to everybody, it being a different like location in the US, not something that people are into. Right. All of these came up, but ultimately we've been the kind of people that have been like, if we have an idea, we have to just try it. Yeah. Even if it doesn't do well, you know, sometimes you just have to do something for the sake of like wanting to do something. Yeah. And I think had this video done better, I think we would now be thinking very seriously about like, how do I get an entire honeymoon for free? How do I get two weeks mm -hmm. in Japan for free? How do I get three days in an all-inclusive in Cancun? There's lots of things that could fit inside of this format, but something about either the way that we filmed it or about the subject matter didn't connect with a lot of people. Yeah, and that's okay. I mean, yeah. I think, so let's it talk a little bit about like, for mm -hmm. those of you that haven't seen it, definitely feel free to watch it on our channel. But this one is definitely different. So how is it different than our typical like three days in, two weeks in videos? Yeah. First of all, it's it's very much a movie, mm -hmm. but also a silly like comedy. You can tell that we're making this just the two of us kind of movie. For sure. For sure. It's exactly that. And also it's a little it's a little bit scripted. Like we were reenacting definitely. things that happened over a period of like nine months and we had to reenact them all in like a half a week of filming, right? Yes. So we had to do a little acting, yeah. I guess, a little acting. Yeah. I, God, it's, I mean, it's, a lot it's of it is- It's weird to say, because we're not actors. Yeah. But. It's like a little bit based on true stories in that like some of the scenes when we dance and have dance parties when we're pre-approved for a credit card, those are actually yeah, like really what happens. we do. Yeah. So the way that we took this from idea to reality yeah. was started out by storyboarding the entire thing. So we had three really like concise acts for this video that I think were really obvious at the beginning. Act one was uh, figuring out the entire credit card system, signing up for a bunch of credit cards and getting so many points that we'd be able to offset the full cost of going to Disney World for four days. Mm -hmm. Asterisk. I blew it and I totally forgot about the, the sign up fees for each one of these credit, like the annual fees yes. for each of these credit cards. I blew it and forgot about that. So we would have need to sign up for probably one more credit card and do the minimum spend to then be able to pay off all those annual fees. But also the annual fees tend to get offset by the stuff that they offer. I don't know. A lot of people got upset in the comments about this oversight and it was definitely an oversight. But by and large, we got like a four to $5,000 trip to Disney World for actually zero dollars out of pocket for just buying the stuff that we that typically we normally would do and that i think was the premise of this like how do we teach what like the whole premise and what the whole point of credit card churning is mm -hmm. is signing up for credit cards and spending on credit cards like you typically would um you know buying gas buying groceries all these different things that you would typically do to amass all these points and bonuses that will help you offset the cost of travel so yeah, yeah. like I think 
that was like the chunk of act one. That was act one was like uncovering the mystery, figuring out just how hard this thing was going to be. Mm -hmm. And then like giving ourselves a reason to go on this quest in the first place, which was our friend yeah. who legitimately had wanted to take their kid to Disney World, but could not afford it. And then being like, please show me how this is yeah. possible. Yeah. That's yeah. So we did that. Uh, act one kind of like ended with the big act one break going into two, which is like, we're going to Disney World. We don't know anything about how any of this stuff works, right? And that was all of Act 2 was like uncovering the entire Disney World experience mm -hmm. from day one, day two, and most of day three in Disney World of how do we give food? How do we uh, live with just $100 and a Target gift card to be able to feed ourselves every single day? Yeah. Is the hotel actually free? Is the Uber thing going to work to get us from the airport to our hotel? Are our tickets real? Which genuinely, they did not seem real <laughs> the entire time until we talked to this lady and she did a whole bunch of stuff on a computer. I don't think our tickets were real yeah. until that happened. Um, it was kind of uncovering, like in the first act was this heist film trying to be able to get something for free. Act two was like, okay, we got this thing for free, but it's not really what we thought it was. You know, we thought it was going to be a little bit lame. We thought we were too old for it. Well, and we and had spent all this time trying to get to Disney World on just points and miles that yeah. we really were not prepared for the actual journey of going to Disney World, which is not too dissimilar to our actual travels, international yeah. travels sometimes. That's exactly how it works. Yeah. So, uh, the act to like a downturn, not that there's a downturn really in like a video about Disney World was just uh, us realizing that we're going to be able to do a lot less with this entire experience than we thought because we were spending so much time in lines and also really uncovering the true cost for people who weren't doing this for free. Yeah. Just how expensive Disney World was for your average person who's going. We're talking easily thousands Pe people were spending ten to twenty thousand dollars to bring them and their kids there for a week yeah and that was like the normal and just like seeing like whoa maybe this like type of vacation is not for everybody and it shouldn't just be the default thought we don't want to give it away too much but i think act three is when we start to understand and empathize with the people that go to disney world yeah, like that why live it's and worth breathe it. Yeah. and love Disney so much because we definitely got caught up into all of it and we felt the Disney magic and we understood why people save so much to bring their kids to Disney World and Disneyland. Without really like telling the whole story, I think I look back at this video with fondness, not just for the journey of us like going through the process of filming this in a different way, mm -hmm. but also going to Disney World and at the end looking back and saying like I totally get why people do this. Yeah. I totally get why people do things hard mode for the sake of other people, for bringing their kids to Disney and for the fun of it. Yeah. Like it it takes a lot, it's expensive and it takes a lot of planning. But like the fun of it is what makes it all worth it. For sure. And and I think it's worth noting that we did not know where Act 2 and Act 3 of this movie were going to land mm -hmm. before we actually left for Disney World. We had an idea. We knew that by the time we left that we didn't know really anything about Disney World because we were just so busy filming the thing. Yeah. This video could have very well ended up at the end of it being like, we don't we're think bombed. we don't think Disney's worth it for anyone yeah. anymore. It's, go, it's way, it's lost all of its magic, all of its charm, but that just wasn't the case. We had a blast oh while we were filming it. I cried yes. tears of joy yes. every single day. Got to feel like a little kid again yeah. for the first time in a really long time. There is some of that Disney magic. It's still there. And a it's lot of that there. truly was the perfect analogy for like why we made this video to begin with. Yeah. We didn't think that it was going to be that analogy. Like I honestly just thought we were going to make this fun thing and either it was going to do well or flop, but mm -hmm. we just wanted to try it. I did not think that the end of the Disney World experience was going to be, I don't know, paralleling what I think, what I imagine a lot of parents do to plan and save for their kids' trip to Disney. A lot of work. It's a lot of work. But the joy and the fun that comes from it is worth it. And I remember thinking at the time when we were filming this, like, is it going to be worth it? Are we... We're going yeah. through Are all we of this. this? Like, but like, 
the the filming process all of it was challenging and new and different and so much fun and all of it was worth it let's walk through let's like walk through what we did boring. yeah so we storyboarded the entire thing from start to finish which for us is just like buy the biggest sticky notes you can possibly get <laughs> get a big window like this one right here and just write down every single scene that you can think of in your head that needs to exist in the video so for yeah. us that was like okay we need to have this part where we like try to dig in and then we need to have this part where like we get taken by the police and then this part where we actually figure out the hotels and how we can get those for free and then this part where we can figure out the flights and how we get those for free and every single idea we're talking like hundreds of sticky notes yeah. and then we take some of those and start putting them in order and then some of them don't fit and then yeah. just go into like the ideas with no home basically the idea graveyard and and we kind of just did yeah. this in the span of like Actually, we started we started brainstorming actually for this while we were walking our third Camino, which mm -hmm. we did and did not film mm -hmm. um, this last summer, this last spring. We were walking and we kind of on one of those days, we just like wrote down all of our ideas for this Disney video yeah. and then started putting it together on these sticky notes. And that's kind of where it began, just this like big brainstorming session where everything fits, what things look like, because we knew we weren't going to be like in the typical, like usually our videos are very spontaneous, like mm -hmm. film everything as we go, very shaky shots. Yep. This one is a lot more intentional setup, right? Like you have to set up each shot, set up the tripod, make sure everything's framed nicely. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot more intentionality behind every single scene. Yeah, yeah. And then once we figured out kind of roughly what order the scenes were going to go in and where the act breaks would happen, like between act one, two, and three, then we start like crudely, terribly drawing approximately how we want these things to look. So as we're booking this thing, it'd be great if like it was the two of us looking at each other. Uh, as we're actually booking, we have this big thing across the booking zone and we like drew that. Or we draw like me digging in the backyard and then my dad tackling me in these like really crude drawings to help us think through and make sure that we're like both trying to make the same movie at the same mm -hmm. time and then to ensure that we're not overshooting and that we're actually like getting the stuff that we need on camera. Because for a lot of these things, especially in this Disney video, we're only going to have like one shot mm -hmm. at actually filming them. And scenes like the car rolling up, stopping, mm -hmm getting out and giving us uh, like the mail for that day. Yeah. And then we go and run inside with it. Like your dad, the true, the true MVP Oscar. Yeah. He's not only a, he's not <laughs> only winner. a mailman. He's a security <laughs> guard. Right, right. So that was basically our process for making this video. And I think that that's the way most people who do this kind of like scripted style of content, <laughs> even though this wasn't. You uh, mean actual filmmakers? Yeah, they actual They probably movie have makers. a lot. They have a lot more to that process. But yeah, yes. generally it was a lot more scripted, a lot more planning in advance. Mm. But the actual Disney part of it still was very, very spontaneous and yes. very just like Let's see how this goes, which actually ended up being way more fun than we anticipated. But the best part, the best part by far was making that crazy arts and crafts whiteboard with all the weird <laughs> conspiracy theories oh on it. Oh my with gosh. Things connected it with was red so string. good. It felt good to be able to put that kind of like love into the video to be able to have time to make that set it up and actually use it as a prop. Yeah, there were moments where I was like printing out all these different all these different like things like looking on reddit what's the best shovel or what's <laughs> what's the what's this campsite like or oh we got to save this coupon and there are some hidden gems if you look at that that board just like one liners that would come to my mind i was like if i write this in big red marker it's it's going to make sense right it's it's crazy <laughs> it's crazy yeah yeah, just that, right to feel that kind of like mania or that that energy. To when feel you that, want something so badly, yeah, when you, and there's only one way to get it, and it's always the most ridiculous way. And that's what we were shooting for was that that kind of energy throughout this whole thing. The dancing parts, obviously, super fun, which we actually do every time that we get a new credit card. Uh, and I think just being able to challenge ourselves creatively, making something in a style that we've never made before. I think that was my favorite part of this by far of this entire process. Yeah, it was just, it was so much fun to be able to do something with this much intention and to have such yeah. a clear vision of exactly the film we wanted to make where usually we're just like taking whatever the world gives us. Shotgunning <laughs> We're just it, yeah. out there wandering around hoping for 
cool stuff to happen. And it was nice to be able to like dip our toes a little bit into like filmmaking and acting and all these other yeah. things that are adjacent to what we do, but not really, not really in our core competencies. Yeah, it was a little bit of like a mix of scripted, not scripted, acting, silly. It's just downright silly, right? Obviously, this whole video is meant to be like a joke, right? Like it's a joke about how expensive Disney World has gotten. It's a joke about how ridiculous it is that Americans can sign yep. up for credit cards so easily and party when they do um, get pre-approved. All of this is supposed to be a joke, but um, in a way that I think had heart too. So that's mm -hmm. what made it really fun. Yeah. And thinking about all of that was something really different than our usual, which is like, just go out into the world and let the world surprise us. Yeah, yeah, just totally different process. I think some of the parts that were a bit more challenging or that we didn't like as much, I mean, definitely standing in lines at Disney World. <laughs> we yeah. spent so much time standing in lines. Yeah. Half of our day spent filming was just waiting to get on the next ride or get on the next ride. And it felt, it felt inefficient for the way that we normally make movies definitely. and definitely for the way that we normally travel. Um, but... I don't know. The rides were a lot of the times worth it. Not always. I'd say some, yeah. of, the, some of the rides are pretty lame. Uh, and it felt like we just weren't able to maximize our time while we, were, while we were doing it. This is exactly why we had hesitation to make this because Disney is not like our go-to either mm -hmm. when we travel. And, and we had a feeling that the audience also wouldn't resonate well with Disney. But there is some truth to it. Like it is a place that we wouldn't choose all the time. It's like sure. super expensive. It's very commercialized. There's a ton of people and, and there's, it's just, you can't, it's hard to do on a budget. It's really hard to do on a budget. And also, do you ever want to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich again? That is one of my least favorite things. Actually, <laughs> I don't think I want to I, see one for months. So it's it's PB and J sandwiches, but also just like looking back at, mm -hmm what we had to do to get to that point yep. of like making sure that we're eating no more than a hundred dollars worth of food from target for four days it was a challenge yeah, yeah. and mad props tough. to the the people that make it happen not only for themselves but also for families yeah. just watching that or the having to cut spam having to cut cold spam on a plate with not even a knife, just a fork. The no. blunt end of a fork. Not a proud moment. It was uh, so disgusting. And it was one moment. of those moments where I was like, I don't think I don't think we should eat like this again. We need to do better. Yes, we need to right. do better. Even if we got to bump the budget up a little bit on the things we make. We can't. This yeah. is... Mm -mm, we were so ashamed at the end of that. But I also think that even though this was primarily the main premise of the whole thing, right? Points and credit cards, using that to your benefit... There is always something that's a little bit hard for me in show, showing videos like this. Um, I don't know if it's because it's very exclusive, right? Sure. Figuring out credit cards, points, and miles has been vastly helpful for us. Vastly helpful for us when we're traveling. We want to stay in really cool places and hotels and use them to offset costs for flights. But knowing that credit card points is only available mostly to US citizens and it has to be done in a very specific way, right? You like that disclaimer while jokingly done is very true. We never yeah. want to like encourage people to do this unless they try to actually do it responsibly. Yeah. But it's it's hard. Yeah, that one was a challenge for me. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely felt like we were yeah, we're making this for a relatively small subset of people, yeah. you know, who could actually do this, which is why we wanted to make it as fun as it was. That way anybody could enjoy it. But still, the whole time it felt a little it just felt a little off that it wasn't truly attainable for everyone. Yeah. Who was and that, watching it. that feels different than what we normally make. Yeah, Where we try to make it to be like yeah. the largest swath of people could have this experience. Yeah. In, you know in as easy of a method as possible. This one definitely felt a little too targeted for what we yeah. were like making. And I think we talk about this in the actual video and we make a joke of it, but truly spending that many points on Disney World. Or on like a Uber gift card. Or that $100 or... Target gift card was truly heart-wrenching <laughs> yes. because it is genuinely not a good deal. Mm -hmm. But some people... You know, that's how they that's how they travel. Yeah, this was the only way to accomplish this mission. But 
I think this Disney video was so fun to make. Uh, definitely like a little sad that it didn't do all that well, so we don't get yeah. to make more of them in the future, right? But it was, it was a blast. Yeah, and we both got very nostalgic and weepy <laughs> at the end of this, and uh, being able to like reconnect with what it felt like to be a little kid, even if just for a little brief moment, made the entire thing worth making. And I think that was really the surprising lesson truly out of the entire process right in youtube land we like there's like this idea that once you found something that works quote unquote on the yeah. internet you stick to it don't change it under any yeah. circumstances be afraid to do anything different oh yeah don't it's experiment so, mm. don't don't try anything new stick with what works because that's what makes the audience happy that's what makes the algorithm happy but I think out of all of this, I'm, I mean, yes, it wasn't ROI positive and it's not hitting big numbers on YouTube, but it is one of those things that I look back and I think I'm really glad that we tried it and I'm really glad that we did it and that we made something that we enjoyed making. Yeah. And I'm so proud of the thing that we made. And it seems like, I don't know, the people who are watching it seem to really like it. And that's yeah. all that really matters to me. Yeah. We would love to know your thoughts. Like if you guys liked this four days in Disney world on a budget video. Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments. If you didn't let us know and let us know why, yeah. but if you have other ideas, we'd love to hear from you. We're going to keep, you know, keep making our usual three days and two weeks in cause those are always a blast for us, but maybe we'll have one or two weird ones in the future. Yeah, for again, sure. So. We're not going to stop experimenting <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Okay. Bye. See ya.